are a lot of problems in this country, especially in the seaside towns like this. Honestly, Scarborough is not that bad. Welcome to Scarborough. And it's kind of going to be a death of the high street episode. We are going to look at all that. But I got a message the other day from a YouTuber who's he's based down south and he does similar stuff to me looking at the state of seaside towns and, and really interesting content. But he said, oh, I'm coming up to Yorkshire. Are you about for a collab video? And I've not done one of these before. And I said, where are you going? And he said, Scarborough. And I've always wanted to come here because it's got a mad history. So I thought, yeah, let's do it. So I'm going to be meeting him in an hour or two. So I thought I'd just wander around first, come up to the castle and have a look and talk about Scarborough's mad history. Look at this. Let me just go give you a view of the sea quickly. You've got to see the sea when you're by the seaside. <laughs> so over there in the distance, you've got the North Sea and going over to Europe. And then back that way, you've got the Yorkshire peaks and the hills. So we're still in Yorkshire here, but there's been occupation of this headland here since before the end of the Bronze Age. And there's been so many reiterations, just look at that, of prosperous wealth arriving in Scarborough. Where this castle now stands, which I'm in, there'd been remains of a fort, some sort of fortress on here, from the end of the Bronze Age going into the Iron Age. And they even found a, a sword dating back 3,000 years in this area. But yeah, as I said, so many reiterations of wealth came to Scarborough over the times. The Vikings arrived here. They all sailed over from Denmark as they were coming to explore and take over the eastern coasts and move inland of England and the United Kingdom. And so it's then Vikings that will have probably set up the first major trading routes from Europe to England and back and forth, and which will have given the port here in Scarborough so much wealth. And people started to notice that. So obviously the castle was built and King Henry III knew the importance of this port. And so he fortified this area really, really well because he knew the prosperity that it would bring. Then came the Black Death, the plague, which affected this area and everywhere really in the United Kingdom and all over. And this place kind of declined for a bit or just didn't have any prosperity really until the Scarborough that we know, the Scarborough that you think of, the seaside town of Scarborough came, which was in the 1600s when a woman named Thomasin Farrow, she discovered natural spring water here, which she said had curative properties to it and opened a spa and people flocked from all over to come to this area where you could bathe in and you could drink this water that was meant to be really, really good for you. And this spa grew in such popularity that the town kept growing and it obviously grew even more and more with the introduction of the Victorian wealth. So when that came, when that arrived with its grandeur and its high society, this place just boomed into what they called the first English seaside town. It was once known as the Nice of the North and the epitome of that Victorian wealth came on show with the Grand Hotel. You can just see it down there in the distance. Yeah, I'll just get out of the wind there, really windy up there. So the Grand Hotel, the first purpose-built hotel in Europe, the first one that was actually erected to be a hotel. Other buildings had been converted into hotels that were bigger, but this was the biggest and the first custom-built hotel. One fact I love about the Grand Hotel, and it just shows off that Victorian wealth, is that each bathtub had two sets of taps, one giving you natural spring water and the other one giving you sea water, so you could choose whether you wanted to bathe in spring water or water from the sea. It was also the biggest hotel on the British archipelago for a long, long time. So I can't wait to go explore that and tell you a bit more about how it was built, why it was built and the, the design of it, because it's honestly really cool. Scarborough as we know it, the, the holiday seaside town will have blossomed and just turned into what it was so famously known for. Then at the turn of the century, obviously that brought the wars. So this place during World War I was attacked via sea from German boats. And then it was also attacked in the Second World War, but via air with bombs, both times killing a lot of people and damaging loads and, and loads of the town. Another reason why people flocked to Scarborough as well was because of its fishing, its fishing port, which I just showed you from down there. But also there was a time when loads of mackerel, it was something to do with the change in the water temperature somewhere, but it meant that shoals of mackerel were coming right past Scarborough and bringing with it huge giant tuna fish. 
So there's these pictures, I'll try to find some, where it's these people and they have got giant eight foot, 300 kilogram tuners. So people were flocking from all over to come and try and get some of this big game fishing in. So another great tourist activity was going on here in Scarborough. But the biggest killer of Scarborough, the biggest killer of most prosperous seaside towns in the United Kingdom. And it was the silent killer that is the package holiday. And when that arrived in the 70s, and 80s and then continued going through the pull of these coastlines just lost that appeal and all that grandeur and wealth and high society which once had settled here in Scarborough disappeared and yeah it was just on the same decline as most places that fell victim to the package holiday like if you've seen that video went to Blackpool it's the same sort of thing there as well so yeah that's just a bit of a brief history of Scarborough and it will be a bit of a Death of the High Street episode this. We'll go see what's doing well in Scarborough, what's not doing well, what's boarded up, and just what the state of the seaside town is like. Now, luckily it's a beautiful day, so hopefully we'll see the town as it should be, as it's been raining for about a month. But yeah, we've got it on a glorious day. So I'm gonna go meet Wendell, yeah, and explore, and just see what we find. I'm really looking forward to this. So here I am, down on the beach. That up there is the castle where we've just been. So yeah, the Grand Hotel in Scarborough, that epitome of the Victorian wealth. And it's got such an interesting design. It was designed around the concept of time. And I guess that time when the Victorians brought that great wealth was its peak. But yeah, it was designed with 12 floors to represent the 12 months of the year. It's got four turrets on top representing the four seasons. It's got, well, when it was built anyway, it had 365 rooms the days of the year but my favorite obviously on the top there's 52 chimneys 52 chimneys representing the 52 weeks of the year so that design that went into it it wasn't just a giant hotel built they were saying look what we're building here look what's gonna last and it's not in its glory days anymore of course but it still looks amazing just waiting to meet Wendell now so I'll see what a room is what is a room going for at the Grand Hotel Scarborough Okay, so for 55 quid, I could stay at the Grand Hotel tonight if I wanted to. What's great as well is just, I guess it's all to do with the weather, but how, how many people are out on the beach today? All the businesses are open, the donkeys are out, people are getting donkey rides, people are swimming. And I'm so glad it's like this today, because I'll admit, when I did the Blackpool one, I actually went out of season. So in a way, it is a bit of a misrepresentation of what it looks like at times. Like it doesn't account for or make up for the fact that the town is still incredibly boarded up and it really is in need of help. But it's great to come to a seaside town looking like it should do. So I am buzzing to explore today. Right, while I'm waiting for him, I'm gonna go play on the arcades. You spend hours in these when I was young. 2P machines, they're my favorite. Yeah, there you go, that's how it goes, isn't it? You start on the two P's, you think, oh, it's fine. I'll have a few games, then you're doing 10 P's. Next thing you know, you're on goddamn zingy bingo. Right, so. Are we both going? <laughs> I'll do it. So, this is Wendell. Hello. Yeah. So, fellow YouTuber who I've met today to explore and, yeah, just go around and see what's going on. So, I'm buzzing to be here with him today. I'm buzzing to be here and meet you at last, mate. Yeah, I know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So, yeah, enjoy. Right, yeah, so we're heading off the beach now and up into the town, away from the busy beach. I assume that when we get up here, we'll start to see some of the boarded up shops and other things that I've, I've heard about. But who knows, who knows how bad it'll be. I have to say, this is probably the most atmospheric in here. underpass I've ever been. And check this out, the old tramway. This is what we're gonna head up into town on because the steps look too hard. Just look at it go, exhilarating. Check it out, so here's the Grand Hotel, which we got a view of before from the front, the once great Grand. And we're gonna go in and have a little look around, explore. 
see if it's still got its grandeur on the inside. And it's directly opposite a travel lodge now. I wonder which room's cheaper, the travel lodge or the grand hotel. There you go. Oh yeah, look at that staircase. And there we go. The hotel back in the day. There's the beach as well. I mean, it doesn't look that busy today, but... Check out this place. This theater, essentially. Wow. I don't know, they must still have entertainment on here. I don't know how good it is. But think of how great it would be back in the day, all the amazing stuff that'd be on here with people visiting. Jeez. Well, the history, it's just at this little model. <laughs> what it used to be like with the trams. They've gone now. Right, we've seen the grandeur of the Grand Hotel. Still looking nice on the inside, some cool stuff. Still pretty cheap to stay at, but now let's go find some high streets and see what state they're in. This bit of the high street seems sound. That might open later. Looks like there's a lot of independent shops as well. Really independent stuff, which is cool to see. You got one there that's for lease. When's that? May lease. Ah. And we've come across it, the first boarded up building. Here we go. And there we go, just directly opposite, another one there. So yeah, one, two. So I did expect to find some, and there we go. Another one there that looks left. Another one to let there, and yeah, I'd say boarded up. Big board over the door, but not too bad. Another pedestrianised bit up here, so let's have a look as well. See what it's like up here. So another one there on this high street bit, but again, like not much at all. Another one to let, but it looks busy, it feels busy. There's loads of stuff going on. It says we're open, but it doesn't look open. And this one's really boarded up. And I've never actually seen one boarded up with individual boards like that. Another one here. Another one here on the end. But as I said, for every one, two that are closed, there's 20 that are open in a row, which is just amazing to see. So me and Wendell have just walked down to what is supposedly the roughest area of Scarborough. We were expecting it to be scary and unwelcoming, but no, it's lovely. It's absolutely fine, nice houses, everyone seems friendly. So again, a positive surprise here. Look at this gaff, what, how many floors? One, two, three, four, five floors. That is massive. All right, yeah, so just got to this bit where there are obviously a couple of boarded up shops but we've really explored today and I honestly thought it was going to be way, way worse than it was from what I've heard. But it was actually fine. It was actually really nice. And um, yeah, what do you think? I've checked out all sorts of supposedly broken Britain towns. 
There are a lot of problems in this country, especially in the seaside towns like this. Honestly, Scarborough is not that bad. It's, um, it's got its problems. There are some boarded up shops, but it is by far not the worst yeah. seaside town I've been to. Yeah, it's crazy. Do, do check out Wendell's channel on YouTube as well. I'll put the link below. He's got a unique take on it all, so do check him out. Um, but yeah, what, what a strange thing. We really went looking for it as well. We went looking for it today and we haven't found it. So some of them are just really nice and I'm happy that Scarborough is really nice. Good. Look, I'm not going to pretend like there's not a problem with empty retail units in Scarborough because there is a lot of them. And looking back through my footage whilst editing, it feels like there was more than when we were walking around. Like me and Wendell both felt like we had to look for this stuff. And I guess it's that hot, nice, sunny day when the town felt full of life. And it shows that there is still life left in Scarborough, unlike some places where I go where it feels unavoidable. It feels like you can't escape the boarded up stuff. It didn't feel like that when we were walking around Scarborough, which was really interesting. And ultimately, as someone who came to Scarborough for the day as a tourist, looking to explore the old Grand Hotel and look at its crazy, crazy history, that's what I left remembering. As I was driving home, that's all I was thinking about. I wasn't thinking about these boarded up shops. I'm just seeing these in the edit. So I've just come down here to the harbour, come across all this fishing equipment here and all the boats there as well. And I just love it. I don't really know much about the fishing industry in, uh, in the United Kingdom. It's something I really want to explore in some of my future videos, go to more places and really delve further into it. We'll definitely do it in future videos. So yeah, as I've been trawling through all the statistics to tell you about Scarborough and looking online and looking at the census information and life expectancy and how many people are cigarette smokers, how many people are overweight, what's the national, what's the average wage, sorry. There's all that stuff you can talk about, but one of them stood out to me. And it's that there's a feeling that life is worthwhile around here. And it's hard to not imagine that, especially on a sunny day when you're looking out over the beach and it's busy and people are riding the donkeys. Or you come down here and it just looks so stunning, doesn't it? With all these boats and all the fishing gear out. There is something so nice just about being beside the sea in a nice seaside town. And I've definitely found that today. I've had a really nice day. I really have had a nice day. Looking at all them boats like that and the view over there out. Lovely, isn't it? So there we have it. The end of the video in Scarborough where I came to look at boarded up property and I left just thinking on a hot, nice day, Scarborough is banging. It's well good. You've got to come check it out still. I know it's approaching winter, so it might be a while. But yeah, no, I had a wicked day exploring stuff. The big old hotel, hanging around with Wendell, experiencing doing a YouTube video with someone else was fun. So yeah, I thought I'd just finish down here on the beach with a poem, one of my favorite poems by John Macefield. And it's called Sea Fever. And it goes like this. I must go down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life, to the gull's way and the whale's way where the wind is like a wetted knife. And all I ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover and a quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick is over. Thank you for watching, nice one. And appropriately, there was a little gull up there as well. Enjoy my poem.